Now, what can we do? We have already talked about substitution effect and income effect in graphical sense. So, we have already talked about you know uh, this is basically we are going to get the Slutsky equation, an equation that gives relationship between compensated demand and Marcellian demand. So, we have already done it qualitatively, not quantitatively. Okay. So, we have already looked at it through graphs, but now we are going to do it mathematically. So, what we can do here because we are talking about varying P 1, how do we get the x 1? x 1 is quantity demanded either in Marcellian sense or in compensated sense and to get generate the demand function what do we need? We need to get quantity demanded as function of P 1. So, basically P 1 is changing and we are studying its effect on quantity demanded. So, here of course, we will take P 2 u naught you know everything constant. constant u naught constant in this case, but u naught here will here u will change the utility achieved will change, but basically we are varying P 1 and if we differentiate both side with respect to P 1 what do we get? Remember here P 1 u naught is given that is given to the system it is par it is you know you p changing p 1 will not change u naught, but changing p 1 will change the expenditure to achieve the u naught. Is it clear? So, changing p 1 will affect the quantity demanded in direct way and here in indirect way. So, how can we write? This is going to be this is the direct effect and also what we will have here is d i basically this is i okay, with respect to the third argument and this is going to be with respect to p 1 fine. And how about here? This is what we will get of course, p 1 will not change p 2 and p 1 will also not change u naught fine. And here rather than using i what we are doing basically here is we have p 1 comma p 2 u naught. Is it clear? Okay. Now, if you pay attention what is this? This is the optimal level of expenditure or minimum level of expenditure to reach to have at least u naught level of utility. So, basically what it is of course, this is not perfectly correct, but we have not discussed that much of mathematics in this class. So, I am taking a kind of you know uh, that does not look completely right, but what this is is basically p 1 x 1 plus p 2 x 2 or here it is this is what the total expenditure is and this is not for any amount this is for the optimal amount. So, and how did we get this? Of course, from the minimization problem that I discussed earlier. So, if I differentiate E with respect to P 1 what will happen? This is let me tell you again this is not perfect way, but this is going to be equal to x 1 h. Of course, you can say that x 2 is also a function of P 1 but at optimal level it does not matter okay. that is what it is little bit advanced, okay. but not that advanced. You can get this using the equation okay. and that will be a one of the homework problem. Okay. Fine, you can get it from here and this we already know this we already know of course, P 1, P 2 and here we have u naught this is we already know is equal to x 1 m p 1 p 2 e of p 1 p 2 u naught fine. So, we can put it back there what do we get d x 1 m del this is partial derivative of x 1 with respect to p 1 what is x 1 it is Marcellian demand. So, what we are trying to get here is the slope of Marcellian demand function with respect to p 1. What is it equal to? x 1 m 
this is x 1 m and this is the optimal amount I am writing in shortcut. This is the Slutsky equation, this is called Slutsky equation. We will spend some time talking about what does it mean, although we have already studied, but again it will be a revision. Math is clear to you how we got this. So, I can rearrange it, I can rearrange it what I can write this is this has to be equal to and what does this represent? This is substitution effect, fine. What is substitution effect? What we are doing? We are changing p 1 here and we are studying its effect on x 1 m. How do we get the substitution effect? That we change the p 1, but we do not change the utility label, we remain on the same utility label. So, this represents x 1 h represents you know it is compensated demand in the sense that utility remains the same. So, this is giving us substitution effect and this term is giving us income effect. Let us spend little more time and let us look at let us pass this income effect side x 1 m is a non negative number. Okay. It is quantity demanded it cannot be negative quantity demanded cannot be negative and what is this? This we have already studied if it is greater than 0 then it is normal good and if it is less than 0 it is inferior good fine. So, if p 1 goes up if p 1 goes up this we know this is we are certain about because of convexity of the preferences. Okay. This is shaped like this. So, if it is rotation p 1 is increasing what is happening if p 1 increases then it will rotate like this budget curve will become steeper because what is the slope of budget curve minus p 1 divided by p 2. So, if p 1 goes up it will become steeper and if it becomes steeper because this particular shape the consumption of good one even in the compensate if in the compensated sense would come down. So, p 1 goes up this is negative as p 1 is increasing x 1 h is decreasing. Now, let us look at this part x 1 m d x 1 m del x 1 m with partial derivative of x 1 m with respect to i. What is happening here? This is negative, this is positive or non negative and what is this? For normal good, for normal good what is this? For normal good this is positive. So, overall this is negative. So, for normal good substitution effect is negative and income effect is negative. We have already learned this, this is just a repetition of the same fact. And how about inferior good? This is for normal good. P goes up, this we have already established, this is negative and minus x 1 m, this is positive, because this is negative, this is positive and this is negative. negative. So, negative, negative, positive and this has two possibility that either you get minus or plus. plus. If you get minus fine, but if you get plus then you get given good. So, one requirement for given good is inferior. that the good has to be inferior. The second requirement is that income effect has to be large. Sir, can you explain that one again given good? Uh, okay. Given good is a 
kind of good. Now, what is happening? If it is plus, then what is happening? P1 is going up and Marcellian demand of that good is also increasing. So, here demand curve is a, an upward sloping curve. Why it is happening? Let us think about it. Substitution we have already seen. Substitution effect is always if price goes up, okay, compensated demand would definitely go down. Now, we have to look at the income effect. Income we as already discussed that income it is not necessary that when income goes up you consume more of a particular good. One example could be that you know potato example that I gave you earlier that income goes up what would happen? You will decrease the amount of potato that you would consume because potato people people consume potato because they do not have enough money. They will probably substitute it by meat or some similar product or milk. Okay. So, income goes up consumption of a good may come down. Okay. Fine. So, here it can be it can move in any direction either negative direction or positive direction and for inferior good income effect is if price price goes up what would happen that the purchasing power comes down purchasing power comes down it means real income is coming down but that is why you will consume more of that good because if your income is coming down you can no longer afford milk mutton or some other products so you have you will have to consume more of potato so that is what is happening here. So, now the scenario here is that for normal good that we have figured out that substitution effect and income effect they work in the same direction, but for inferior good they work in the opposite direction. So, there is a theoretical possibility that for inferior good that not only you know for that that income effect is larger than substitution effect and in that case what would happen? the price would go up and consumption of that good will also go up and that sort of goods are called Giffen goods. It is very difficult to get Giffen goods in the real life because the condition that income effect has to be large and it is difficult to have large income effect because you know you do not spend really significant amount of income on one particular good. Okay, you distribute your income over a large number of goods. Okay, so, that is why it is difficult to get Giffen good. It is clear, Slutsky equation is clear and substitution effect and income effect with help of substitution Slutsky equation is also clear. So, we have done it using graph graphs and also mathematically fine.